So with the exception of hydro, it's a well-known thing that renewables, so wind and solar, are generally more expensive than conventional generation. It's supposed to reverse somewhere between 2020 and 2040. However, when have you ever known a projection to come true? That... It's a little bit of a no-brainer that if all you're interested in is the energy, well, go buy a generator and pour something in that you can burn. For renewable energy, it makes it a much more difficult job. It's a bit like a salmon swimming upstream. You've got to have other reasons for wanting renewable energy apart from just generating energy. And you can understand why that would be the case. I mean, you know, a wind tower, it takes tons of concrete, gallons of fiberglass. That fiberglass is going nowhere for 100,000 years. Solar is very intensive. It's a strip mining operation, purification, energy intensive, lots of pollutants and relatively expensive. So there's lots of things really operating around it that makes that the case. Thankfully, there is an alternative. Now, nobody really knows where kites came from, although they can be located in Asia. The Chinese claim the first kites in something like the 5th century BC, but the earliest known depiction of a kite was around about 9,500 to 9,000 BC, making them somewhere around 1,100 years old. It was the Munai people who actually still used this style of kite that developed, uh, that painted that cave painting. And that cave painting can be found in Muna Island, southwest Sulawesi, Indonesia. From there, it's thought to have moved to China, and from China, of course, it moved to India. The Chinese used the kite for a whole host of things, including measuring distances, wind speed, travel, military communications, and they have said to have lifted men with kites. In India, they became famous as the fighting kites, and it wasn't until around the 13th century that Marco Polo brought the kite back to Europe. The kite in Europe was first recorded as a drawing, I believe, in about the 1800s. And of course, the 19th century, it was used by the Wright brothers to measure wind speeds and enjoyed something called the Golden Age of Kiting. They lived about the period from 1860 to 1910 across Europe. And they're still used today, obviously, for things like scientific measurements. And there's been a whole host of kite developments, including the... Um, Eddie's tailless diamond kite, the Rogallo wing, the sled kite, parafoils and power kites. So kites have an extraordinary long and illustrious history. It wasn't until about the 1970s when Lloyd suggested using kites for power generation and he did some early experiments then. Unfortunately, of course, there wasn't the electronics to control the kites nor the materials available. That has all changed, obviously. Now, kites can only really operate in two ways in order to generate power. One way is to lift them, and as they lift, drag a rope, which is round, wound round a drum, and that operates a turbine. When you get it to its height, you can change the pitch, and it will literally drop to the ground. When it gets low enough down, you can change it again, and it will fly and pull that drum, and that's one way of generating energy. Another way is to make them uh, go around in circles, and as they go around in circles, they're tethered to the ground and they can run a generator because they're rotating. There has been a huge growth of interest in kite-based generators. In 2017, there were something like 60 companies involved and in research institutes in kite-based generation. And what's cool about kite-based generation is it's scalable, both up and down. So it can go from megawatt scale industrial kites that have been developed by larger companies to even smaller systems like the one by Rob Reed on the Isle of Lewis where he basically uses a kite to lift his kite like structure that rotates in the wind connected to a bicycle wheel connected to a generator and rod claims that he can charge his electric cars or plenty of energy to boil water. So a very successful smaller scale which the individual could build and of course that always appeals to me because it's great to look at what companies are doing and what the future might be like for mass generation but it's also great to be able to do your own thing and to generate at a scale that's reasonable at home. 
Now, the reasons really that kites are so interesting is their lack of structure. Now, it's without a doubt that kites have had a bit of a shaky start, and airborne wind energy is slow in taking off, if you pardon the pun. But numerous companies are developing technologies such as large kites that can harvest wind energy up to half a mile above ground. And while it's still in its early stages, airborne wind power could potentially be used in remote locations or flying from barges offshore. In 2022, the German company Skysails Power launched a wing over the beaches of Mauritius and although it only generated about 100 kilowatts typically enough to power 50 homes which is just a tiny fraction of the island's demand sky sails see this as a sign of the future because as the world heads towards net zero emissions pretty much every pathway for future electricity production foresees a big role for wind. The International Energy Association forecasts wind energy skyrocketing 11-fold by 2050, with wind and solar together accounting for something like 70% of the planet's electricity demands. Thanks mostly to the expanding number of wind turbines dotting fields and adorning ridgelines worldwide. The cost of wind has plummeted by about 40% in the past decade. But some wind experts say that those massive turbines aren't always the best solution. They can be expensive or logistically impossible to install in remote locations or deep waters and just can't reach the lofty heights where the wind blows the hardest. To harvest these spots, it may well be that flying a kite is the answer, and that's why dozens of companies and a handful of academic institutions are now investigating a plethora of airborne options. And as we showed earlier, Rod is giving a very fine example of a DIY version that you can basically put together yourself. It could be that an 11,000-year old technology is going to come to our aid in the 21st century. Anyway, I hope you found that was interesting. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.